Hi, it's Jamie, one of the drone pilots of Camelus. Today I'll be doing a brief comparison between the DJI Mini 2 and the Anafi. I will be showing the difference between the physical attributes, the camera quality and the features they both provide. The first point we'll cover are the physical attributes between the two drones. We'll start off with the Mini 2 first. And the main thing that you can see straight away is the size difference between the Mini 2 and the Anafi. It does live up to its name as this is significantly smaller, but that does mean that this Mini 2 is 249 grams. So you are legally allowed to fly this anywhere except no-fly zones such as airports or military bases. I have the Fly More combo of the Mini 2, so I get this prop protector, which is really nice as it keeps these props held in place and they don't uh, wobble about and just get in the way. Uh, if we take it off and see the actual size of the drone unfolded, it still remains uh, a pretty small and compact drone. Still decently small, but this is quite rigid. It doesn't look, you know, for its size uh, to be very rigid, but these arms aren't actually, they don't really have any flex to them. Like you can, you can try and bend them a little bit, but they're not flexing at all. It just feels quite quite sturdy. It does feel kind of fragile, but it's it's really not. The next thing with the Mini 2, which I have noticed, is the battery bay can be quite annoying. Uh, this is inside the drone, so you can open up the back here, and that's where your battery will go. And you can slide it in there, and there you go, your battery's done. You pop the case down, you can start the drone. But to remove it, it can be quite annoying, as you need to lift this up, and there's a little tab underneath there. Uh, and that can be annoying to get to and sometimes it can be quite a struggle to remove it but that's only a minor thing. In terms of obstacle avoidance the Mini 2 doesn't have any except two ground sensors for the bottom when it's landing. Because of how low the Mini 2 is to the ground especially these back propellers taking off in grass can be quite annoying as these propellers will then begin to cut the grass and in some some cases if they can't spin up properly they will actually stop and the drone won't let you take off. In terms of cooling, there aren't any fans or anything, uh, so in summer this can get kind of warm, but to combat that they have fitted two vents at the front, a couple vents on the side, and then some vents at the bottom that will keep the airflow going over the components and keep it cooler. Next is the Anafi, and straight away you can see this is larger. Uh, if we unfold it here and compare the size, you can see that these are, they're not too far off, but this Anafi is certainly bigger. This does mean because of its larger size, it can deal with wind much better. This one does not have any sort of prop protector. So when you're trying to put it around, these props can uh, move about a bit uh, and they can catch on stuff. So watch out for that. It does come with a lens protector. Uh, just a simple thing on the front of the camera that you can just pop on and just take off. Pretty simple, but it works well. Compared to the Mini 2, this does have a bit of flex in the arms, especially on these back ones. You can kind of twist them around a little bit, but that's not necessarily a bad thing, as if you do hit something on one of these arms, it will kind of absorb the impact and is less likely to shatter. The Anafi's battery is much easier to use, as there's a slot here, you can just put your battery in and slide it in until you hear a click. To take it off, you just push the button down and pull it out. Much more simple than the Mini 2 and a lot easier. The SD card position on the Anafi is a bit more inconvenient compared to the Mini 2, which is just on the back. You can just push that and it'll pop out, just that one there. The Anafi's is a little more tricky uh, as there's a small little uh, bit of metal that you need to pull down and then you can unlock it and take your SD card out. There's no real slot for it, you just need to place it on that little slot, put the bit of metal back up and push it upwards. Now this bit of metal can break and can be annoying to replace, uh, along with putting the SD card in, it can be quite difficult sometimes. Because of this size of the Anafi, uh, the props are much higher uh, from the ground than the Mini 2. This means that when taken off in grass, there's a, uh, less chance of cutting off the grass and damaging your motors. Um, you can also get um, extender legs for these arms uh, and these will extend it and sit it off the ground a lot more which means even more grass clearance. The Anafi does have cooling uh, by one fan underneath here 
and that will constantly run and it will keep all these vital components in the actual body of the drone cool. One of the great things about the Anafi is this gimbal. It can be tilted all the way up and all the way down. This means that if you want to get some shots under bridges or anything, like uh, when you're using it for inspections, it can be much easier to use an Anafi as the gimbal can actually point upwards. There's very little drones on the market right now which have this ability, so that is really nice. Now it's time to compare the Mini 2 and the Anafi's video and image quality. As we can see here, this is the Mini 2 shooting at 4K at 30fps. Compare it to the Anafi, which is also shooting 4K at 30fps. They both have the ability to shoot JPEG and RAW photography. Here is a comparison between the JPEGs. The Mini 2 does have a 12 megapixel camera compared to the Anafi's 21 megapixel camera. And now the RAW. The Anafi's RAW photos do need lens correction, as you can see on the horizon of the image that it bends downwards. But if you have the right editing software, you can do some lens correction and that will disappear. Both drones have the ability to zoom, however the Mini 2 only has 2-4 digital zoom as there is no optical zoom. However the Anafi has lossless zoom up to 2.8 times and standard to 3 times. The details of the flight performance will be coming from the drone's official websites both of which state that these are ideal flying conditions with the minimal wind. In terms of battery life, the Mini 2 has a max air time of 31 minutes compared to the Anafi's 25. These times are based on when the battery reaches 0%. Ideally, you should be landing at around 30% of your battery to prevent long-term damage. In my experience, both drones can stay in the air for around 20 minutes before they need to land. Surprisingly, the Mini 2 has a max speed of 35 miles per hour. Not far behind is the Anafi with 33. This is plenty of speed to keep up while filming. As expected, the smaller Mini 2 struggles with wind as the maximum wind speed is around 23 miles per hour. Due to the Anafi's weight, it can handle much more up to 31 miles per hour, meaning windy days are less of a worry. Finally, the max distance of the drones can vary largely, however, legally you aren't allowed to take your drone beyond visual line of sight, so this will be around 500 meters. But to state what they are, the Mini 2 has a max range of 10 kilometers compared to the Nafi, which is almost half at four kilometers. Both the Mini 2 and the Anafi have in-flight features that are available to use. The Mini 2 has HDR photos. It has a number of quick shots, including Rocket, Helix, Boomerang, Droney, and Circle. It also has the ability to capture panoramic photos and to edit the photos in the DJI Fly app. The Anafi, however, has a lot more features available to use. This includes HDR photos, the ability to choose between different flight presets to change the speed and characteristics of how the drone flies, cine shots, which is the equivalent as DJI's quick shots. These include 360 degrees, reveal, spiral, and epic. It also allows you to use waypoints that the Anafi will follow. Using your phone to control the drone. And the ability to use Pix4D to create 3D models. So how much will it cost for each drone and what's included in their packages? The Mini 2's base price comes at £419. This includes all the essentials to get up in the air, including the drone itself, the controller, only one battery, a few cables, a gimbal protector, one pair of spare propellers, spare controller sticks, six spare screws and one screwdriver. This means to charge the Mini 2 you'll need to plug a cable into the back of the drone to charge the battery. I do not like to do this personally as I like to take the batteries out of the drone once I've finished. The price for the Fly More combo is £549. This £130 can give you propeller holder guard, a two-way charging hub, a shoulder bag, 12 extra spare screws, two extra pairs of spare propellers, and two extra flight batteries. The Parrot and Affy standard price is a couple hundred pounds more at £630. This will include the drone itself, one battery, the controller, a small carry case, a 16 gigabyte micro SD card, USB to USB-C cable, 
eight spare propeller blades and the prop mounting tool. For the Inafi extended pack, this will be 800 pounds and this will give you two additional batteries, a compact travel bag, an SD card adapter, and two additional USB cables. Both of these drones are more than capable of getting high quality videography and photography. The Mini 2's camera has an edge over the Anafis in my opinion. It seems to have a sharper image which can really help to catch those smaller details. However, comparing both to the features they offer, the Anafi is a much better choice. This is due to having many more features than the Mini 2. Overall, if you're more interested in capturing stunning photos and videos while being able to fly anywhere due to its low weight, then the Mini 2 is a better option for you. Or if you're more interested in having a lot more features to play around with while easily being able to 3D model, then the Anafi is the best choice. Thank you for watching. Let us know what drone you prefer and why in the comments below.